Hello, hello English readers. Welcome to this new live read along of the graded reader adaptation of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I'm Lydie Bureau and I'm an English teacher in France. I'm also the founder of Lydie's Book Club in which I host live readings of adaptations of classics of English literature but also contemporary novels and I tend to prioritize books that are written by women and once a week I um, meet the members of my book club by Zoom to discuss the chapters read over the week. We also talk about books and learning English and any topics that come to uh, into the conversation and for this new live read-along especially this month and for the next the the next ones in the future uh, I will host in uh, addition to the 12 live reading sessions that I host on Instagram that can vary this month I will host 12 reading sessions because there are thir there are 12 um, chapters so I will host 12 live reading sessions on Instagram that will be accessible as well on replay on my YouTube channel, on Lydia's Book Club YouTube channel. And um, on three Saturdays, there are going to be three live workshops and we've already done one last Saturday. Uh, you can find all the dates of the next... Um, live workshops um, in the description of this video. The second one will be on the 1st of June and we will discuss chapters 6 to 9, so the chapters that we're going to read this week. And we're not doing, uh, I'm not doing the live uh, workshop this Saturday because, big news, I am attending the Innovate ELT conference in Barcelona. Uh, it is hosted by the um, Oxford um, ELT uh, school in uh, Barcelona. And um, they are organizing this conference about English teaching and language teaching. Um, and uh, it's Saturday and Sunday, so the 25th, uh, 25 and 26th of May. And you will find all the information on my Instagram account. I created a post on the about the conference and uh, I'm doing my talk on Saturday afternoon at 6.30 and I'm very excited. It's going to be my first talk. And I will be talking about how book clubs and literary conversation can enhance English fluency. Very interesting topic. Um, so I hope that uh, you will be interested in maybe going, attending. If you live in Barcelona, then I hope that you'll be able to attend this conference. Uh, or that you, if not, uh, if you uh, will be, I hope you maybe will be able to attend the conference uh, to travel to uh, Barcelona uh, for a, a little getaway weekend. <laughs> so hopefully, yeah, you'll be able to uh, to uh, attend this conference or get to know about uh, this conference. I will add the link in the description of this video as well so that uh, it would be uh, easy for you to get all the information and um, if you're an English teacher maybe that might be uh, of interest for you and um, yes I will make sure that um, I will find a way to make this um, talk also available on my website in the near future so that's for more information later um, now to be able to have access to these live workshops that I'm currently doing on uh, the reading of Jane Eyre you have to become a member of the book club of Lady's book club so make sure you subscribe now to 
you can still attend those live workshops. There are two remaining, so you can still attend them, even if you were not uh, there for uh, the first one. No worries about that. So today we are going to read chapter six. And if you'd like to know more about Charlotte Bronte's life and uh, her book, Jane Eyre, I invite you to listen to the podcast episode 20, an introduction to Charlotte Bronte and Jane Eyre. In this uh, podcast, I talk more about Charlotte Bronte's life and the context of the writing of this novel. So um, uh, that can be a good way for you to get to know more about Charlotte Bronte's work uh, as a writer and um, get an overview of uh, Jane Eyre's novel. So if it's a novel that you're just discovering, then uh, it can be very useful for you. Okay, so now I'm going to do a quick recap of um, the chapter that we, uh, chapter five that we've read um, on Friday, last Friday. So uh, as you can see, there are lovely illustrations. Oops, sorry, lovely illustrations here. Uh, this is an adaptation for A2 plus learners of English. So if you have an upper beginner level in English, then uh, it, uh, it's exactly the level for you. But if you are only a beginner, that can be a great challenge for you. And even if you have a higher level, then there are always new words that we don't know. And um, it doesn't prevent you from um, getting to know the story and reflect on the story. The, re the reading is going to be very easy, but, or might not, you never know, but um, it will be less challenging, of course, of course, than someone that has a beginner level, but um, it will be more challenging in if you're part of the book club and you attending one of our live workshops, then that this is where uh, the your reflection and your ability to discuss the book that will uh, be more challenging, let's say, and listening to other people's view that will be uh, challenging. And um, this is what ex is exciting as well. Okay, so in chapter five, we left off with uh, Jane Eyre um, attending those tea meetings with, um, with these daily tea meetings with Mr. Rochester uh, in the drawing room. And, um, and uh, in this these very unusual meetings because Mr. Rochester is Jane Eyre's master and um, he is enjoying his, uh, her, her presence and um, she's become her, his companion. Uh, and um, it feels like Jane has a special place, a special status in comparison to um, Mrs. Fairfax here. She is the housekeeper um, of the house. And um, she is, as you can see in the, how, how the characters are displayed, she is in the back of the room and uh, has more an observer position than an active one. She's very much in the background um, and she's just listen, she's listening to Jane and Mr. Rochester's conversation. 
And here you've got Adele and Pilot, uh, Mr. Rochester's dog. Adele is um, a little girl that Mr. Rochester's has in guardianship. She, he is her guardian. She is called, uh, we call, um, so Adele is what we call a ward. She is Mr. Rochester's ward, so a child that he is looking after, um, although he's not his father, her father. But we there are a little there are some debates around uh, the fact that she might actually be his um, daughter, but um, that's just speculation. Um, she is her, uh, she's in her his care. Sorry. So they are enjoying these conversation almost, yeah, nearly all, every evening. He's calling for uh, Jane and Adele to, to come to the drawing room and have tea uh, with him so that Jane can um, entertain him in the conversation. And... Um, and one night, um, Jane is is not still not asleep. She's in her room and she hears some noise coming from Mr. Rochester's room, bedroom, and um, and and then she smells some smoke. So she goes uh she goes straight away to his room and she finds mr rochester in his bed asleep because of the the smoke that has fixated um like um putting kept him in sleep and there is an illustration about um the fire here and uh, jane saving mr rochester's life by trying to um, uh, stop the flame. You can see the jug here and water spilled on the floor. Uh, and um, yeah, she, she, uh, she tried to, um, and then she, she, shaked, she, she shaked him to, to wake him up and rescue him. And uh, Mr. Rochester feels very in debt to um that in, indebted to her um for for saving his life is uh, he feels very um uh, moved by her gesture and um yeah he feels he feels quite uh, shaken up by this uh, um, turbulent nights and um, you can feel like uh, uh, some some feelings are growing in him <laughs> okay so let's get started with the reading of uh, chapter six guests arrive I did not see Mr. Rochester the next day. In the evening, I came downstairs expecting to meet him, but I found only Mrs. Fairfax. The, we the weather has been very good for Mr. Rochester's journey, she said. Journey? I said. Has he gone somewhere? Yes, he has gone to Mr. Ashton's place. Ten miles past Milcote. There are lots of people staying there. Lord Hingram and his beautiful daughter Blanche, Sir George Lynn and others. He will be there for a week or more. But he did not return after a week. Another week came and then a letter arrived. It is from Mr. Rochester, said Mrs. Fairfax. He's coming back in three days and he's bringing people with him. Hmm. At the end of a warm April day, Mrs. Fairfax, Adele and I watched a group of men and women riding towards Stormfield. Pilot ran in front of them. Mr. Rochester rode at the front on his, back, on his black horse, and next to him rode a lady. 
She wore a purple coat that nearly reached her feet. Her long hair was thick and dark. Miss Ingram, said Mrs. Fairfax, and she quickly left the room. I watched the horses arrive at the front of the house. Adele and I ate in the kitchen. She was excited and wanted to go and meet Mr. Rochester's guest. Mr. Rochester and his guests are busy, I, tell, I told her. You must stay with me. The next day, the group went out riding. Once again, Blanche Ingram was next to Mr. Rochester. He likes her more than the other women. He likes her more than the other women, I said to Mrs. Fairfax. I would like to see her face. You will see it this evening, she replied. Mr. Rochester asks for you and Adele to join him after dinner. Adele and I went into the drawing room just after 8 p.m. Adele immediately went to speak to the women, but I sat quietly by the window and sewed and sewed. There were eight women there. There were Mrs. Ashton and her two daughters, a large woman called Lady Lynn and Mrs. Dent, who was thin and pale. Then there were Lady, Lady Ingram and her daughters, Blanche and Mary. All three, three were tall and beautiful, but Blanche was the most beautiful. Her eyes were dark, like Mr. Rochester's. I watched her carefully. She played the piano well. She sang beautifully and she spoke very good French. But I noticed that she liked to, meet, to make people feel stupid. Hmm. Mr. Rochester stood next to the fire and watched her. He did not look at me. Blanche looked at Adele, looked at Adele, and then at him. I thought you did not like children, Mr. Rochester, she asked. Hmm. There is here an illustration of um, here Adele, Mr. Rochester, and the ladies. You've got uh, Jane here next to the window in the background. And um, who do you think is Blanche Ingram? Which one do you think it is? Hi, Katie. Welcome. Hmm. Let's wonder maybe the one in the middle. What do you think? <laughs> I don't, he replied. Then why are you looking after this little doll? This little doll. She is my ward. Remember the word ward, he said. Then why didn't you send her to school, she asked. Oh, but you have a governess for her, don't you? I saw a person come in with her. Yes, there she is, by the window. Oh, don't talk about governesses, said Lady Ingram, the mother, quickly. I have ever had terrible ones. I'm just very happy that I don't need them now. Take that, Jane. <laughs> so... You can see how insidious people like are very uh, subtle criti criticism uh, people, um, how people find ways to criticize other people like indirectly. The conversation moved on to the marriage, on to marriage and other subjects. I watched and listened until Blanche began to play the piano. I saw that this way my this, I saw that this was my chance to leave, and I quickly stood up and moved into the hall. But Mr. Rochester followed me and stopped me at the bottom of the stairs. Why didn't you speak to me in there? He said. You look pale, Jane. What's wrong? I'm tired, sir, I replied. And a bit sad, he said. Well, tonight you can go, 
but I want you to join us every evening. Now go and send Sophie for Adele. Good night, my... But he stops himself for saying any more. Then he turned and quickly left. Hmm. Well, what do you think he was about to say? Goodbye, my... What what would you what what one could expect when you say my dear maybe or my love <laughs> my dear yes Kitty well done yeah <laughs> so but as you can imagine as him being her master cannot have this kind of vocabulary cannot use this kind of word towards her that's not oh my love yes <laughs> too soon too soon <laughs> yeah so luckily he stopped there because it wouldn't have been appropriate to to say that so this also make you think can can make you think that mr rochester how what me how mr rochester's feel about jane you know if he he was almost ready to say that uh what kind of discourse he's made in his um mind about jane hmm. the days after this were busy how different from those first three quiet months. Everywhere I went, in the corridors, in the drawing room and halls, I met the guest or the servants. Each evening I went to the drawing room and saw and sought while Mr. Rochester and his guests talked and played games. Mr. Rochester never looked at me, but he looked at Blanche Ingram often. I was now sure that he was planning to marry her. I was not jealous, but it made me sad to watch them because I knew that Blanche Ingram was not a nice person. She was beautiful, but she was not good. She was not intelligent and she did not love him. She was, too, she was not nice to Adele and pushed her away if she came near. I knew that Mr. Rochester saw this too. I did not know why he was going to marry her. For money, maybe? Hmm. Or because of her family? During this time, we had a short visit from a man called Mr. Mason, who lived in the West Indies. He arrived in a carriage and asked to see Mr. Rochester. When I went to get Mr. Rochester and told him that Mr. Mason was here to see him, his face turned white. Hmm. He looked like he was about to faint and sat for a few minutes with one of his hands in, in both of his. With, with one of my hands in both of his. So he's holding Jane's hand. Then he asked me to bring Mr. Mason. A few hours later, Mr. Mason left. That evening, Mr. Rochester was very quiet, and he seemed worried. Two days after Mr. Mason's visit, I received a letter from, Be from Bessie. Remember, Bessie is um, Jane Eyre's um, old, not servant, but she's Jane Eyre's. She used to be Mrs. Reed, so Jane's aunt servant. Yeah. So when uh, Jane used to live uh, at her aunt, Mrs. Reed, Bessie was one of the servants and she was the only one that was kind to her in the house. So um, then she received a letter from Bessie. Okay, what happened? Dear Miss Eyre, I am writing with bad news. Mr. John Reed has died. His life became very wild. Yes, 
So Kitty is sorry, I'm stopping here. Yes, I remember. She was she was nice to her. Yes. Um, so the letter. Dear Miss Eyre, I'm writing with bad news. Mr. Roch Mr. John Reed has died. So Mr. Mr. John Reed was her cousin. So Mrs. Reed's son. You remember the one that uh, perse persecuted her. You know the one who abused her. He was he would hit her and being very mean to her. He died. His life became very wild, and he mixed with the worst. And he mixed with the worst men and women. He owed money and went to prison. Three weeks ago, he came to Gateshead and asked his mother for all her money. She said no. The next day, he went back to London and killed himself. So he commit suicide. He committed suicide. Okay, because he was in debt, and her mother also gave probably didn't have enough money because I guess she gave him all the money she had um, in her possession. And uh, yeah, a lot of money, I guess, not all, because she seemed to have left, some left. But um, but yeah, um, as far as I remember, when in the original text, um, she, Mrs. Uh, Reed ends up almost broke um when we well let's not spoil anything but yeah because of him she um lost a lot of money so he commits suicide he committed suicide in london his mother became ill and died a few days ago i am writing because i found a letter for you in her things it was from your uncle, John Eyre, in Madeira, and it was written three years ago. When he dies, all his money will come to you. I don't know why she did not send the letter to you. Hmm. Let's guess why. Um, please, would you come to Gateshead for your aunt's funeral? Your cousins, Georgiana and Eliza, would like to see you. Yours, Bessie. I closed the letter and I immediately went to find Mr. Rochester to tell him my news. He did not look happy that I was leaving and I had to promise to return soon. So this is the end of chapter six. And just as... Uh, note uh, about the adaptation here um in fact they adapted a little bit big, the story because um jane receives a letter uh, it's yeah the yeah the, it's not quite yeah the adaptation i have a little uh, critic about the the information here she does the mother Mrs. Reed her uh, Jane's aunt doesn't die before she arrives she Bessie sends her a letter to tell her that she is ill she's very ill she uh, John Reed has died and uh, Mrs. Reed is very ill and she asks Jane to come over to uh, Gateshead, to come back to Gateshead. So Jane comes back. So th there is something, or maybe there are two letters, I think, because Jane comes back for, um, yes, I think there is, there is another letter. Uh, yeah, they combine the both. <laughs> because first... Jane Eyre goes back to Gateshead to look after her aunt because Georgiana and Eliza are completely 
in their own world and only worried about the inheritance that they're going to get once their mother dies they can't they just uh, wait that their mother dies and they're all wrapped up in their own um, lives and own preoccupations and um so Jane goes back to uh to Gates Head and looks after her aunt. So you see how Jane instantly, as she reads the letter, she goes um on to prepare her things and she is she's getting ready to to leave. Uh so you can see how forgiving she is after all she suffered from her aunt uh, and the hate that comes from the, that woman, um, she, still, she still comes back and, uh, um, and she is ready to, to help out. So she goes back and stays um, a couple and she ends up staying a month or, or something like that. So while she's there, her aunt is going to die and, and then she will stay a little bit longer to uh, arrange the funeral and take care of the funeral of her aunt. So, so this is what happens. And then there is another letter, uh, another letter that um, probably Mrs. Uh, that probably Bessie sends later on to tell her that Mr. John Reed has died. Oh, that that her uncle has died, and that Mr. John Eyre, and um, and that he is um, um, leaving her all the money. Yeah, that is another letter um i will check uh after this live because now it makes me um a little doubt about this but yeah this is how it happens so there is probably two letters i think there is two letters there are two letters so they combine both in here just it's just a matter of um information and uh, just to staying quite uh to keep it right to the uh towards the the original text but it doesn't really um change much much of the main plot um so yeah so as you can see jane um has uh, is getting busy with uh, with her aunt's funeral so she leaves Thorn Thornfield Hall and Mr. Rochester better go though although he is quite um unhappy about it uh and uh, as we as uh, as we read she has to come back definitely <laughs> so yeah you can you can start to feel um a little tension between these two especially after the 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 night uh of the fire um mr rochester runs away you know he goes straight uh to he, the next day he goes to his um friend Mr. Ashton and uh, doesn't come back after a month or something like that and uh, yeah uh, oh, yeah a few weeks um so it feels very much that um and he and when he comes back he's not alone he's with those people so it really feels like Mr. Rochester wants to um doesn't want to confront um, Jane on his own. 
uh, after what happened the the night of the fire yeah so that's it for me today and i hope that you enjoyed the live reading so make sure that you subscribe to the book club membership to have access to the live workshop and take part in the live workshop the second session is going to be on saturday the first of june uh, in which we will discuss uh, chapters six to nine. And I hope to see you uh, in one of my lives and uh, make sure you comment um, about this live reading, about this video. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, whether it's about the book club or about my conference that I, I will attend the innovate elt conference i'm attending uh, this weekend if you have any question about that feel free to email me or uh, leave me a message on instagram and in the meantime i wish you a beautiful end of the day and i will see you tomorrow for the live reading of chapter seven bye